recently watched Dave Jones from the EV blog take apart one of these Rubidium frequency standards. Um, I thought, oh, that's an interesting little toy. And they're so cheap, they're like 25 quid from China. They come from scrapped cellular comms equipment. I mean, they're, they're normally about $1,000 or so each as a new product. So I thought I'd get hold of one. Fired it up and it was struggling to get to maintain, um, to go into lock mode. So I sort of pulled it apart. And unfortunately in the process, I accidentally connected 15 volts down the five volt supply and it started drawing three amps instead of its normal two amps. So I thought, well, they're only 25 quid, I'll just get another one. So I decided to do a, basically carry on where Dave left off in tearing it down and actually take the physics package to pieces. This is the lamp. Um, you can see there's a coil weld around a glass bulb. And this is basically just a, um, there's no electrodes or anything in the bulb. It's just a glass envelope containing the gas um, to produce the rubidium spectral lines. So if we turn it on, you see it lights up with this hazy, uh, hazy glow. And that's produced by the RF field that's coming from that coil at, I think it's about 70 or 80 megahertz. And on the back of this, at the top, there's a temperature sensor on the case of the lamp and two transistors. One is actually being used as a heater to control the temperature of the, the lamp module, because although the, the lamp gets some heating from its own internal, from the, the glow itself, it does need to be held at a fairly accurate temperature. Capacitor there, that uh, looks like a series resonance circuit with the inductor um, and the heater. That's probably a fairly high voltage, um, low loss ceramic capacitor. And this is the re um, resonator cavity. So you've got the lens in the front where the light from the lamp enters. And there's the coax cable goes to this little bit of strip line circuitry doing no doubt all sorts of evil RF black arts. And there's a couple of presumably tuning or adjustment screws on there that probably control some sort of small capacitance or something about the um, cavity. And on the back here, um, at the top again, we've got another temperature sensor, another transistor being used as a heater, and there's another two little leads. These actually come from a photocell that measures the light output in the cell, which is what changes when the um, RF excitation is it on the exact resonant frequency of the rubidium. Uh, um, inside the shielding can for the resonator, there's a coil. Um, my guess is that this is to create a magnetic field to concentrate the um, to sort of concentrate whatever's happening in this resonant cavity. Um, again, I don't really understand the physics of this thing, but that's certainly a coil, not a heater, and it's it's made it's on a plastic former. My guess is it's to uh, somehow control the um, RF black magic that's happening inside this cavity and the fact that the cavity is a fairly chunky lump of metal means it can't be high frequency because that should be absorbed by eddy current losses so uh, just taking a close look at the way this transistor is mounted there's actually a piece of ceramic between the transistor and the body so this is obviously pro to provide a thermally conductive electrically insulating interface you can just about to see there's what sort of looks like solder I guess. So it's the transistor soldered to the ceramic and the ceramic is either soldered or bonded onto the microwave cavity. Uh, inside the microwave cavity um, there's this white stuff, this is clearly some sort of dielectric material, it sort of feels like it's probably ceramic-y type material or some sort of composite. Um, there's a little wire that sort of I think goes through the PCB to the edge, I know that might be the actual coupling into the cavity and then there's these two adjustment screws that just sort of adjust the length of the screw into the cavity I mean I don't really know what this is all about, this is all weird microwave alien technology and the other half um, you've just got the rubidium cell surrounded by heat shrink sleeving and a lens in the end well, I've just peeled off the heat shrink from the rubidium resonance cell and there's actually two separate cavities there. I'm quite sure whether there's maybe two different, slightly different um, chemical compositions inside there. There's this little sealing pit which is how the thing's actually sealed off. It's actually made of, looks like it's two sheets. I'm not sure if that's two sheets of glass which have been fused together with a bit, a bit of tube I think to keep the, the sides flat. Um, this is the cell so you can see the um, 
photovoltaic cell at the air, at the end, which is obviously a very large area, to capture as much light as possible because um, when this thing sweeps through its transition frequency, the change in light is about 0.1%, so it's a very small effect. So they want to capture as much light as possible to um, actually detect it reliably. Right, this is the lamp assembly. I've just taken the coil out. Um, you can't really see a great deal, but it's basically just a, a glass. It's like a little glass enclosure with the uh, stuff inside. It's, it's all glued in at the bottom, so I can't really pull it out, I think, without risking breaking the glass. I think I might have to look at... Uh, I might have to just cut the metal away to get a closer look at this. Hmm. Hmm, it turns out this thing's made of copper, presumably for thermal conduction, which means it gets quite hot quite quickly when you hold it, when you're dremeling it, so... Just get some pliers. Let's cut away the metal, see if we can just snap it off completely. Just bending it till the rest of the copper cracks. <clears throat> so this is the bulb cleaned off of all the glue and everything, so it's just a glass, sealed glass enclosure. Of course, um, the nice thing about both the um, enclosures being just sealed glass with no electrodes, it, it gives it very long life because um, most discharge lamps, one of the limiting factors is deterioration of the electrodes, so as soon as the electrodes um, aren't there anymore, um, it's a completely sealed system, so there's really no mechanism for chemical or other degradation so these things have a very long life um, in the back seal it's a bit hard to see because of the reflect the um, glare but you can actually just see there's a metal deposit in there there's the edge of it which is actually some rubidium metal and when the globe's heated and the gas uh, I'm guessing there's maybe another gas in here like argon or something which produces the initial glow discharge when the RF field is in place and that, that then generates the heat to vaporise some of the uh, rubidium metal to provide the, the vapour to provide the um, specific spectral line that this thing needs. Right, as you may remember from your chemistry class, um, rubidium is an alkali metal in the same series as sodium, potassium, lithium, etc. Um, the same principle, it should react violently in contact with water, so um, let's give it a go. Well, that was a bit unexciting. I think the crunch of the glass was more than any actual reaction. There's the end, the end where the metal was. I can't see any traces of metal left over there. Let's give it a quick poke just in case it's uh, sitting inside an air bubble or something. No, I think it's reacted, but I think there was there was so little on there that you didn't really see anything. And there is a slight sort of mist on the inside of this container, but I think that could could even just be natural condensation rather than uh, any result of any reaction. Oh well, need more rubidium. <laughs> 